What you just heard was the same lick played in three different contexts. In this lesson, you will not only learn this arpeggio lick, but also how you can get way more out of the licks you already know and the licks you will learn in the future. You have the tabs available in the link below where I've written out the lick, but also how the intervals change as you change the context. So with just a little bit of theory knowledge, you can expand your vocabulary quite dramatically. First off, here's the lick slow down with on-screen tabs. You can get it under your fingers. <laughs> You can view this in two ways, see all three variations as the chords in the same key, meaning if you see this as E minor all the way, you're basically playing the same lick over the one chord, E minor, the four chord, A minor, and the flat six chord, C major. The other way is to view it in a modal context where you hear whatever chord you're playing it over as the one chord of that mode. So meaning when you play it over E minor, you just hear this as part of the E Aeolian scale, which it is. And if you play it over the A Dorian, or A minor chord in this case, these notes will turn out to be part of the A Dorian scale. Because E Aeolian and A Dorian share the same notes, but very important distinction here is that when you're an A Dorian, you won't hear E as the root note, as the home bass. You will hear A as the home bass, even though you're playing the same notes. And the same goes with any related mode. You can absolutely make this work for the remaining four notes of the E minor, G major key as well. So try it out over the G, B, D, and F sharp. Simply resolve it to a scale note above or below if you don't like the ending. And even if you have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to these scale degrees and modes and whatever, you can still get a lot out of this simply by relating it to a physical distance on your instrument. For example, if you like the sound of this lick when I play it over the C chord, you can just view the distance between C, the root note you're playing it over, and the starting note of the lick. So I'm starting here on the 12th fret, and we have C ringing, right? So that would be this distance. And you don't even know that this, need to know that this is a major third. You just need to be able to see this distance to be able to apply it in other keys. So if you do this, for example, in G, Lydian, you just move the whole thing down, and then you keep the distance here. So then you know that, okay, if I'm on this key, I need to start on this note, and then the rest would be the same. So don't let a lack of theory knowledge stop you from experimenting with this. And like I said, if you check out the tabs, you can see on a scale diagram how the notes change intervallically. And I think if you check that out, you learn a lick, and then you check it out how it works against the E as the one chord, C as the one chord or A minor as the one chord. Then you can see how everything starts shifting in relationship to those notes. And I think when you can see that in three different ways, that should open up some doors for you as well. The next step for you will be to take some of your favorite licks and try it out in the same fashion. So if you have a lick that works really great in any one key, just try playing the same lick over all the remaining notes in that key. And whenever you find something that you like the sound of, make sure that you understand the relationship between the key you're in and how the lick lays on the instrument. And if you can do that, you can really get the most out of everything you learn. If you're not that confident with the modes just yet, just check this video out and that will help you out.